going on guys idle freak again um i wanted to make another video uh i just made the update on the idle dev blog not not too long ago um so tom gave me the idea to uh make another video and we'll, we'll be doing a little brainstorming for your help desk incremental today um so tom why don't you start it off uh while i look for some music um so yeah we this, the talk today is mainly about the direction of where the game is going and where the game is now and uh sort of the feedback that we're looking from the idol freak fans um the main reason for the switch was well i mean i can't really speak for johnny but there was just a lack of support from the fans and i think a good amount of that can be put back on us for not interacting with the fans and not asking them what they wanted out of part of idol and so now that we've started help desk incremental we want to get the community as involved as possible please ping us on twitter please hit us up on facebook or instagram we want to work with you here's our instagram and then up next is our twitter bit of a typo there and after this is our this is our facebook all right so to sort of start, kick off the devlog um the once again first and foremost thing we need your feedback on this we need to know what yeah. you're thinking on this and then now johnny's going to go into as the lead dev go into the systems of the game and where we're going to be taking that yeah so uh started off progression um, we need to figure out a game loop, so you don't have, for the game loop, I was thinking maybe like a prestige mechanic. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, um, what else do we need? The game, what is the game? Um, right, so, so the game, um, we're gonna have, uh, tickets come in, like, automatically into our ticketing system. And then, what the player can do is manually, manually resolve these tickets. Maybe you find manual. Ma you. Ma manually click, manually click resolve, resolve button to resolve these tickets. What happens when you resolve them? When resolve, we'll create a list. Um, what will first happen is sell the tickets. You're selling the completed tickets? Who's buying some? What do you mean? Wait, after- wait, sorry. Man. When you complete a ticket, what happens? So when you complete the ticket... I just saw another one. Can you put something on, please? No, that's good, that's good. Alright, uh, so when we resolve these tickets... The ticket goes through to your boss, and the boss, no, I don't know, what happens when you resolve all these tickets? Well, it's the currency that you're going to use to upgrade stuff, so what would that be in the purpose of the Wouldn't it just be money? Yeah, cash, but like, how are you getting cash out of these tickets? Exactly, maybe we have, uh... Maybe we have a failed system here, guys. <laughs> Maybe four minutes into the progression talk, you realize this makes no fucking sense. <laughs> How about instead... Yeah. Instead, you click to create tickets. Okay. You click a button to create... You don't need to create manual. A button to create tickets. Okay. So, what we are is a help desk company. So, when we get a ticket created, that's someone sending us an IT issue that we fix for them and get paid. So, when we press that button, we're creating an issue that is worked on by our workers. Our workers complete that ticket. Or we can manually click to work on the ticket. So, you need to... That doesn't make any, you need to click to generate the ticket and then click to work the ticket. Yeah. So you have to click. Each clicker has like five different things to click. 
No, you click the generate and everything else is automatic and then you can speed up the process of working the ticket, but you don't click. Like, that's what I'm saying. You manually click to speed it up, up the issue being worked on because the workers are generating. So, all right. Uh, so let's get them up more. <laughs> yeah, so what you're seeing here is actually, um, I was actually working on this earlier. It's um, going to be, well, okay, so earlier Tom came up with a really good idea, and that idea was character customization. Uh, do you want to go into that? Or? Yeah, so the idea is that. Um, you're going to be creating your character, and this character, um, you can do the color, you can give them a cool face, we have tattoo options, we have pose options, where they can make different silly goofy faces, they can be scary, shocked, hungry, doesn't matter, fearful. Um, after the initial customization of the character, you're presented with a new screen, and that new screen allows for you to check out your trees and your future prestiges alongside the factions system. The faction system allows you to choose between 15 different factions that all give you different perks to your help desk team um, through different tribal means, spiritual means, technological means. It depends on which faction you pick. Yeah. For example, if you were to pick the Templars faction, you might be finding yourself doing a lot of praying to work those tickets faster. Yeah. If you were to pick the Techno Freak faction, you might be putting a couple of extra chips into that PC and you're going to be getting those tickets worked much faster than before. So, um, yeah, it's all about the character customization and the faction. As far as the skill trees, each faction within of the 15 factions, each faction has its own separate 30 skill trees that you're going to be able to pick and choose from. Each of those 30 skill trees has about 80 skills inside, each unique from each other, all active skills. There are no passives, so you're really getting like a fully fledged game here. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have been asking what the contents of the skill trees are. Oh, right. Um, so I actually haven't really gone too too in depth with that yet. Um, but I think maybe just like flat, flat, you know, uh, multipliers. No. There's um, no passive bonuses. They're all active skills. They're so all about 900 active skills. Oh, each, there's about 15 factions. Each faction has about like 30 skill trees. So we have a couple of active skills that we were going to go over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, wait, yeah, we can go over that. Let me get a new line. <laughs> um, so for skills. 15 factions, 30, 30 skill trees to each faction, skill trees per faction. So 15 times 30, can I get a crunch on that? That is... Four, 450 skill trees. So... Like we said, the different factions kind of have different approaches to resolving help desk issues. And so within those factions, that's sort of where the actual gameplay comes in. Comes in. So although the factions may initially seem like an aesthetic choice, the way that your skill trees are made by the designers is with those factions in mind. So you'll notice that your gameplay greatly changes um, yeah. between the factions and then within those factions between the 30 skill trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, could you talk about the frost skill tree? Oh, right. So frost skill tree that's native to the what is that? Fuck. Uh, winter cause, I think. The winter cause. Okay, so frost. Uh, I'll just write this down just to give it a little bit of a visualization for you guys. Frost skill tree native to the winter cause faction. Oh, uh, so for this skill tree, I think I this is just a rough rough estimate, but there's like some somewhere between 200 nodes. Um, 
I think 80 active. No, it's, yeah. It's well, like, I mean, we can know it's okay. We well, how many active skills are in this? Every game? skill is in it. <laughs> no, there's some passive. There's some passive. There are? Yeah, there are. Okay, my okay. bad. So, 80 active, 120 passive. That sounds good to me. I believe. Could you let's give an example of an active skill? So, right. So, that's what I was going to get into. So, the um, frost chips. Frost, yeah. frost computer chips. Frost chips. Can inject your laptop with a frost chip. Inject laptop with frost chip. 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 Um, so, now... Um, just a, it's a quick example of one so, skill, one fact. Yeah, let's do one more skill for one more fact. And let's do... <laughs> can we do the... Can we do the... Uh, let's do the technocrat skill tree. Technocrat. Technological yeah. aristocrats. I like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for this... This is underneath the technopunk faction. We could go back... Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I forgot... I actually forgot about this. Yeah. We need a, um, how many nodes was were in this? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I forgot about this faction. Mm -hmm. Two, I think it was 200, but then 80, 120 split again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The, the early factions we were making, we kind of just... Damn it. So, an example of a skill from this one, um, I was working on this the other night. Um, techno chips. So these are chips that you can inject your. It would be per, inject laptop with a techno chip. Oh, kind of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Um, so what about events? Yeah, like, so every week there's a new event that chooses a random faction, and for that. <laughs> sorry, every week an event kicks off for a 1 of 15 factions. With this happening every week, even though it might not be your week this week, there's a really good chance it's coming up because it's weekly. So, the, a really good example of a faction event um, would be, well, and this is probably what we'd be running, we, call, we do them in what we call circuits, which is every single faction gets its own event, and then we change up what event that is next time. So, when it comes your faction's turn, um, what'll happen is you're going to get an additional skill tree. So this skill tree um, has an additional 200 nodes, an additional 80 active, and an additional 120 passive. You're going to really want to grind during this event because then that's going to give you an additional um, skill tree that was otherwise unobtainable. Um, so let's go... Could we give an example of uh, a, skill a, unique, an, a unique skill that... For, yeah, yeah. So for these unique skills, we're all about play to play not pay to win play to play um and what that what that pretty much means is um we don't we don't like adding any pay to win anything into it um so that's that's why we try to do these events we try to make the player feel op without making them have to pay so um what's an example of an active skill so like that was the question <laughs> i know I'm, I'm getting into that so for like a unique skill that would probably be like like a really like a really cool cosmetic looking a really cosmetic skill a really cool looking skill like it's holographic and shiny yeah holographic skill event holographic shiny that yeah that could be an event that could be what the event would be called for someone getting something like this <laughs> yeah i agree so um, I got, in the comments of the last video, there were a lot of people, aside from the people asking what was going on with Hearth Idol, there were a lot of people asking for an update on our time at IdolCon. Um, since IdolCon, could you change the song? <laughs> uh... Okay, so since, since a lot of people have been asking about the post-IdolCon vlog, I'll sum it up. It wasn't good. We set up a Hearth Idol booth, we tried to talk to as many people as we could outside and inside of the panels, out of and in during discussions. People were not receptive to Hearth Idol. Um, there were certain companies, I don't want to call out anybody in specific, but Sony, Paradox Interactive, and Nintendo were all extremely, extremely Rude. mean to me and my brother when we, talked to them, when we brought this to them. Rude. 
Um, they did not want any of the USB drives. They did not want any of the merch that we brought. They wouldn't even shake our hands. So we're not necessarily going to be excited to go back to IdleCon unless it is funded. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we are now announcing the early access of Help Desk Incremental to help fund our next trip to IdleCon because we cannot go on our own dime and be treated like fucking outcasts. So please, please consider donating. Um, our Kickstarter should be linked below. Once you join that Kickstarter, we're going to send you out an early edition copy no later than 2025, and you'll be able to access the game early before the full release on Steam, and hopefully Nintendo Switch, uh, if I can get them to shake my hand. Thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, like you said, Idlecon, too expensive. Um, if you want to donate while also being able to play Help Desk Idol Incremental, um, then yeah, you can join the Patreon, we'll link it, um, Kickstarter. We're also gonna have a Patreon though, too. Yeah, so. Um, what else could we go over? I think this is good. Yeah, cool. Alright, um, yeah, that's it.